This is Robin on the Road, your concierge for all things travel. And today I'd like to take you on the road with me to Richmond, Virginia and beautiful Hollywood Cemetery. Pack your bags, let's go. On a recent on the road trip to Richmond, Virginia, I had the pleasure of visiting Hollywood Cemetery. I have been to Hollywood several times in the past and always find it to be one of the most beautiful places in Richmond. Started in 1847 on land that was formerly known as Harvey Woods, Hollywood was created in a park-like setting. Instead of rows of graves, the roads and paths meander up and down the hills with amazing views of the James River and the city of Richmond beyond. Today, I would like to take you on a tour around Presidential Circle. The graves are part of the Hollywood Cemetery tour map. While the numbers are not sequential, all the graves I'm going to cover are within walking, walking distance of one another. Parking is located on Oak Avenue. After you park, head towards Presidential Circle and stop one. This grave is one of the two major events that will happen in the life of the cemetery, and it will change Hollywood from a local city cemetery to a famous one. The first major event in Hollywood's life was when the body of our fifth president of the United States, James Monroe, was moved here from New York in 1858. And it's here we begin with Tour Stop One. Monroe was born in 1758, and he was the last of the Revolutionary War presidents. He served as officer in the Continental Army, United States Senator, Minister to France, and twice elected president. Best known for the doctrine bearing his name, he will die penniless on July 4, 1831 in New York City. 27 years later, on July 5, 1858, his body will be reinterred at Hollywood in what will soon be called the Birdcage. When I first came to Hollywood Cemetery over 20 years ago, the Birdcage was painted in black, and the circle had not yet been updated with its beautiful cobblestones. Today, his grave is lined with trees, and as you sit close to his grave, you find that it is truly a place of peace for our fifth president and native Virginia son. Not 10 feet away from Monroe's grave is tour stop number two, the grave of President John Tyler, 10th president and the first to achieve the office with the death of the ninth president, William Henry Harrison, 30 days after the inauguration. While probably best known for their ticket slogan, Tippy Canoe and Tyler Two, Tyler himself is far more interesting and will serve as Governor of Virginia, U.S. Congressman, U.S. Senator, a man who will fight to keep the country together. But when that fails, he will work to govern the Confederacy until his death in 1862. It will take 50 years before he is forgiven and his current grave is put up. Today he shares a spot at Presidential Circle, making Hollywood unique as one of only three cemeteries on the East Coast with two presidents. Stop 10 returns us to Presidential Circle and the grave of Joseph Reed Anderson, an iron manufacturer he will purchase Tredegar Ironworks in 1848, unique in the agricultural South. A graduate of West Point, he serves as Brigadier General until 1862 when he resigns his commission due to an injury. He will return to Tredegar Iron Works and become a voice for peace. Post-war, he will double the capacity and by 1873 employ over 2,500 men, many of whom are black laborers and skilled workmen. While the factory will fail to integrate, it will be in operation until the 1950s. Stop 25 returns us to his presidential circle in the grave of Matthew Fontaine Murray. Born in Fredericksburg, he will sail around the world three times from 1825 to 1834 and produce and publish many navigational charts. Appointed superintendent of charts and instruments for the Navy Department, he begins to publish on oceanography and meteorology. He becomes internationally famous. In 1861, he accepts a position as command of the Confederate Navy and will go to England as spokesperson for the South. 
Post-war, he will teach meteorology at VMI, passing away in Lexington, Virginia in 1873. His body will be moved to Hollywood. Stop 47 is the grave of one of the original founders of Hollywood Cemetery, William Henry Haxall. After a visit to Mount Auburn Cemetery in Boston in 1847, William Haxall and Joshua J. Fry returned to Richmond with a plan for Hollywood Cemetery. The land will be purchased from Lewis F. Harvey for $4,075 and contains 42 acres and three roads. Today, Hollywood is an active cemetery of 135 acres but still maintains the park-like setting. That concludes the graves that reside within Presidential Circle. However, there are several graves that exist on the tour map that are within walking distance. If you are interested, please continue the video. Cross Presidential Circle toward the James River and continue down the hill toward the left. Stop 28, the grave of John Pegram, is an example of the cost of war. Born in Petersburg, he is a career soldier, first with the U.S. Army and then as Brigadier General in the Confederate Army. Graduate of the U.S. Military Academy, he will fight on both eastern and western fronts of the war. In January of 1865, Pegram will marry Richmond Bell Hetty Carey in a rare happy celebration of life, only to lose that life three weeks later at the Battle of Hatcher's Run. His funeral will be held at the same church he was married. A Additionally, his brother William Ransom Johnson Pegram is also buried here, killed two months after John and a week before the end of the war. Stop 32 is the grave of James Alexander Seaton, Secretary of War for the Confederate government. He was born in 1815, his family one of the original settlers to Stafford County, Virginia. A graduate of UVA, he was elected to the U.S. Congress and will be appointed by John Tyler in 1860 to the Commission of Peace in order to prevent war. Post-war, he retires from public life, passing in Goochland County in 1880. Stop 24 is the grave of John Young Mason, American politician, diplomat, and federal judge. Born in Greensville County, Virginia, he will eventually have a law practice in Southampton, Virginia. Serve in the Virginia House of Delegates, Virginia State Senate, U.S. House of Representatives. Appointed in 1841 by President Martin Van Buren to the U.S. Court of Eastern Virginia, Secretary of Navy under John Tyler and President James K. Polk, finally U.S. Minister to France, where he will die in Paris in 1859. Stop 6 is the grave of John Garland Pollard. Born in 1871, he becomes Virginia Attorney General and then Virginia Governor. In Richmond, post-political career, he will help found the Virginia Museum of Fine Art. Stop 13 is the grave of Philip St. George Koch, Brigadier General of the Confederate Army during the first year, a published agriculturalist. He becomes despondent by the war and commits suicide after the Battle of First Bull Run. He is buried on his plantation grounds but reinterred at Hollywood in 1904. Stop 46 is the Lloyd family plot and their amazing tree stone markers. Buried between 1898 and 1946, there's mother, father, and six children who lie under these amazing tree monuments. Stop 38 is the grave of R. Lindsay Walker, a graduate of VNI. He was born in Logan, Virginia in 1827 and will rise to the rank of Brigadier General. Fighting with the Army of Northern Virginia, he somehow escapes wounding and surrenders at Appomattox. Post-war, he returns to farming but is involved in railroads and construction of the Texas State Capitol. He passes in Fluvanna County in Virginia in 1890. Stop 37 is the grave of William R. Terry. Born in Bedford County, Virginia, he was a graduate of VMI. He will rise to the rank of Brigadier General in the Confederacy and be wounded seven times throughout the war, although he will be with the Army at the surrender at Appomattox. Post-war, he is elected to the state legislature and will eventually run the Confederate Soldiers' Home in Richmond, Virginia. Stop 9 is the grave of Henry A. Wise, best known for deciding the fate of John Brown. He will also serve in the U.S. House of Representatives as Minister to Brazil and as Brigadier General during the Civil War. He completes the seven Virginia governors resting at Hollywood Cemetery. Things to know before you go. Today, Hollywood Cemetery is active and open from 8 to 5 every day, with extended hours during the summer. The presidential graves and that of Jefferson Davis are easily accessed by car, but some graves would be a challenge for people who are mobility impaired. 
Taking on the full tour map in one day would be a challenge, as some graves are difficult to locate, the cemetery is very large, and there are numerous beautiful distractions about. I recommend the purchase of Hollywood Cemetery's Notable Residence book by Joseph R. Herbert, as it is a companion to the tour map and gives a much more detailed description of the people I have described. It is available for purchase at the Hollywood Cemetery gift shop in the old church where you can support the cemetery, but also on Amazon and at other bookstores. Restrooms are located in the old church. This video is part of a larger video I had made last year of Hollywood Cemetery where I followed the tour map. However, with the cemetery being as large as it is and the numbers are not sequential, I thought if I made one that was more geographically located, it might make it easier for you to watch my video. I'd like to thank those who have watched my original video to Hollywood, and I will include a link on this one, so if you haven't had a chance, check it out. Lastly, I would like to thank you, fellow traveler, for joining me on this tour of Hollywood Cemetery around Presidential Circle. I highly recommend the next time you are in Richmond, Virginia, you take the time to stop in and see this most beautiful cemetery, as well as the burial place of two of our U.S. presidents. Please smack that bell and subscribe, and show me some love with a like or a rumble. Until that time, this is Robin on the Road, your concierge for all things travel, and I hope to see you out there on a road of your own. Until then, safe travels.